Let's face it, no one really buys DVDs anymore. In the last 10 years, sales have dropped by 80%. The convenience of streaming platforms mean that many people are now ditching their old movie collections. And with limited options for recycling, these are most likely destined for landfill. So instead, we're turning them into sunglasses. This video is sponsored by Ground News. We get lots of plastic donated to us on a weekly basis. And recently, more and more people were coming to us saying that they want to get rid of their DVD cases because they take up a lot of space, but they don't know what to do with them. DVD cases are always made from polypropylene, which is great for us because it's a material that we can recycle. And while we already have a whole range of products that we make from 100% waste plastic, we want to make something that's super high quality that everyone can use out of all this DVD waste that we have coming in. So after being in development for a whole 10 months, we have finally succeeded in making sunglasses out of recycled plastic. We are super proud of this achievement, so we thought we'd share the whole story with you and show you as to why it's been so very difficult. So firstly, we had to decide on what method we wanted to use. You can melt polypropylene in an oven or a panini press, but once it's melted down, it is harder to work with than HDPE as it gets pretty sticky. Even if we could find a way to make raw plastic sheets out of our recycled DVD case material, it still wouldn't be the best way to make high quality frames. Sunglasses are a super tricky shape to make because they've got no flat faces. So making them out of sheets would be super time consuming and waste a lot of material. So to make sure we waste as little plastic as possible whilst keeping the quality as high as we can, we enlisted the help of our pal Rory from Sustainable Design Studio to help us with one of his aluminium molds. Rory has a sunglasses mold design already, so he took that and customized it with our logo and messaging. We also asked for a removable insert to be added, so we had the option to swap out those logos and messages in the future for things like collaborations. And once the mould design is done, Rory sends it off and we have to wait four to five weeks for it to be manufactured. But while we wait, we can start processing the tonnes of DVDs we've been donated. 99% of the time, the DVDs are donated to us with the discs inside, but as these are made from a different type of plastic, we have to remove them. These could be sold, donated, or kept to recycle, which is definitely something we're planning on doing in the future. We always like to leave them open when they're stacked up, as it means we get to have this satisfying little treat. Nice. We also have to remove the sleeve as well as the artwork. The sleeves are made from LDPE, so they have to be separated, and these can be quite tricky to recycle, because typically this is where grubby fingers tend to touch, which can contaminate the mix. We did consider taking these to a thin film recycling drop-off at a supermarket, but these have got a pretty terrible reputation for actually getting recycled. But we have saved every single one of those clear plastic sleeves we've got from all of our DVDs, so if you have any ideas of what we can do with them, just let us know. Once all the DVD cases are prepped and sorted into various colours, it's time to shred them down into more usable size pieces. Our shredder is a dedicated plastic shredding machine which chops the DVD cases up into roughly 8mm flakes, which can then be used in our injection machines. Polypropylene is a lot more brittle than HDPE, which means it makes this super satisfying crunch sound as it gets shredded into bits. We shred everything into separate colours, being sure to clear out the shredder in between. This way we end up with a load of raw colours that we can make custom and repeatable blends from. Now we are fully aware that recycling waste plastic is only a small part of a much bigger change that's needed to get us out of this mess that the planet is in. And making the world a better place also requires us to stay current on all the regulations and changes happening around the world. For example, this story on New Zealand supermarkets being the first to ban thin plastic bags. This is an absolutely awesome step forward and we're really hoping it inspires other supermarkets markets to do the same. This also brings us on nicely to the sponsor of this video, Ground News. Ground News is a website and app that combines thousands of local and international sources all in one place. The benefit to this is you develop a more well-rounded world view as you can see every side to every story including international perspectives. Ground News also gives insights into bias distribution, showing which way each source leans, giving you a deeper understanding and helping you to make informed decisions about the content you consume. We've created our own list of interests so that we can get news on topics such as green energy, climate change and sustainability. Ground News gives you details on how the ownership of the sources reporting on stories is split. 
and it gives you really interesting headline comparisons to show you how different sources use different language when reporting on the same story. Saving the world is more than just recycling one piece of plastic at a time, it also means staying up to date with changes to policies that can have a massive effect on our planet. So go to ground.news slash brothers to check it out, and subscribe through our link before the 25th of September and you'll get 30% off at limited access. A massive thank you to Ground News for sponsoring this video, now let's get back to the sunnies. So after shredding every single piece of polypropylene we could find in the workshop, we still had a little bit of time to try and amuse ourselves. But then fortunately, our favourite little face arrived at our door, mould in hand. And just check out this absolute beauty of a mould. Now we've got our brand spanking mould ready to go, it's time for testing. Lots and lots of testing. Now since we're all about making quality products that people can be proud of and to try and change the perceived value of the waste that we throw away so much, we set the bar pretty high for these glasses, which it turns out was very difficult to hit. The first thing to do was test if the mould actually worked. So just like we do with all of our other moulds, we preheated this in our oven for its first test run. Here are the first pair of frames that we've ever made from recycled plastic. And whilst the mould worked beautifully, our technique definitely needed a little bit of tweaking. We found that if we used too much force or if the mould was too hot, we ended up with loads of flashing, which made the cleanup just ridiculous. But if we didn't use enough force or it was too cool, then the mould might not fully fill. So we went through a load of testing to work out the perfect amount of pressure at various mould temperatures. After a few weeks of testing and lots and lots of test frames made, we finally found that sweet spot that gave us nice consistent results. The next thing to tackle was how we were going to turn these three separate parts into a wearable pair of sunglasses. Two things needed to happen here, the first being the hinges for the arms and second was the lenses. These sunglasses have been cleverly designed with minimal moving parts. So unlike most other types of glasses out there that use mechanical hinges on the arms, these glasses have been designed with a little bit extra material in the pivot points and that way a single screw can be added for the hinge. Not only does this mean that these are far less likely to ever get broken, if they did, the user can repair them themselves. The downside to that is that we have to manually drill all the holes in every single pair that we make in exactly to the perfect spot. To increase our chances of getting this right every time, we made this little jig that held the arms and the frames in the perfect spot when we are drilling. Then we use a tiny one millimeter drill bit to drill the hole in each pivot point and then use a countersink to make sure the screws set flush. But getting this position wrong, even just by a tenth of a mil, means that the arms wouldn't close properly. So naturally that took a load of practice and a bunch of extra wasted pairs. But it's alright because we can shred those. 
So since we've got Rory in the workshop here with us and we get loads of questions asking us about setting up recycling workspaces, we figured we'd just take advantage of him being here and he can tell you exactly how he can help. Go on, mate. Hey guys. Okay. <laughs> Amazing information, thank you so much, Rory. If you wanna hear more from Rory, just check him out. <laughs> Come on, get in here. Thanks guys. So the Sustainable Design Studio was set up to enable businesses exactly like Brothers Make. We've been doing this for the last three years and last year we shipped over 240 machines. And we've worked with small businesses, universities and individuals convert waste into opportunity. We do this by providing molds, product design, machines and even training. So if you're looking to get started, I'll make sure Brothers Make put a link in the description below. Right, that's quite enough of that. Taking my line, thinks he's one of the brothers, doesn't he? The next and arguably the most important thing to do was to add the lenses. But naturally, this added a whole new set of problems to try and overcome. Luckily, we are very clever. <laughs> Rory's mold was designed around a specific lens, meaning we could just buy a load of replacements and have all of these lenses in lots of lovely colors. So sadly, at the moment, we're not able to make the lenses out of recycled plastic, but if you knew of anyone that does, please let us know. Now, to fit the lenses into the frames, there needs to be a groove for them to sit in. Unfortunately, this isn't something you can design into the mold, as otherwise you'd have an undercut, which means the frames would never come out of the mold. Some companies do compromise on this by molding in a very shallow groove, but this just means the lenses end up falling out all the time. Now, we are not interested in making an inferior product, so we taught ourselves how to manually cut this groove into every pair of frames using a special little cutting tool. But one slip of this tool and you've ruined an entire pair of frames. So we set our workshop tech Hannah onto the task of becoming the sunglasses lens groove cutting extraordinaire. Catch your name, eh? This is just one of those things that needed a ton of practice. So as you can imagine, it meant a load more frames for the regrind box. Not a problem. But after a few months of practice and a few modifications to the setup, Hannah can now cut a perfect pair of grooves with her eyes closed. No, that would be dangerous, don't do that. The last step was to perfect the cleanup process. We managed to minimize any flashing by getting the mold at the right temperature and getting that pressure exactly right, but we wanted to make sure there was absolutely no imperfection or rough spots on the sunglasses. Using a combination of a very sharp knife, a mini heat gun and our polishing mop, we were able to get these frames looking and feeling great. So all that was left to do was to choose our colors and pop in some lenses. Nice and easy, right? <sighs> we knew that we wanted this to look like a recycled product, so we wanted to have some of our signature marbled color in there. But narrowing the colors down and choosing which color lenses to go with each set of frames took a very long time. In the end, we decided we we're gonna keep things nice and simple, and for the first batch, we we're gonna restrict ourselves to three colors. And for the lenses, we simply bought every color that they had available, and then had the hard task of working out which pair of frames match which color lenses the best. So after all of that hard work, we are so proud to introduce you to our latest recycled plastic product offering, Loops. So as we said, it was really hard to narrow this down, but here are three choices of colors for loops. We went for some with classic black frames, but marbled black, blue, and white sides that we call black ice. A marbled white and black mix that we call smoke on the water. And a set made using Blu-ray cases that we're calling Blu-rays. Geniuses. The name Loops actually originated from Mobius Loop, which is the technical name for the recycling triangle. Plus, we figured it also lends itself nicely to the circularity of our new product. 
If your loops ever break, we would take them back, shred them down, and turn them into a brand new pair. And of course, what kind of sunglasses makers would we be if we didn't have some sort of cool looking case? We source these beautiful looking cork cases that fold down completely flat when you're rocking your sweet new loops. We even engrave them ourselves in our workshop with our new Stepcraft laser engraver module. The last thing to do was to add in our custom sunglasses cleaning cloths and with that I'm pretty sure we're all ready to go. We cannot begin to tell you how proud of these we are and we hope you guys like them too. And as of the day that this video has gone live, we are now selling these over on our website at brothersmate.com. Thank you so much for watching this video. It's taken us a long time to put this together as well as make all those sunglasses. If you've got an idea for a different color combination that you'd like to see us do in a future batch, then just let us know below. A big thank you has to go out to our workshop team, George and Hannah, for helping us bring this idea to life. And of course to Rory for designing the mold. And a massive thank you goes out to this wonderfully attractive bunch over on Patreon. They've actually known about Loops for the past couple of months and they've been like our little board of advisors. Helping us out. Yeah, they've really helped us out. So thank you to all of you wonderful lot. If you want to join the legendary crew over there, check out patreon.com forward slash brothers make and see if it works for you. A massive thank you to all of you legendary people watching this video. More to come very soon. Love you lots. See ya. Blu-rays, getting like Blu-rays, like the DVDs. Geniuses!